So very good afternoon, morning and evening to all, depending on the time zone that you have joined in today. Thanks a lot for taking out time to be a part of today's webinar on a very important theme, dissecting strategies to drive ag tech adoption by farmers. This event is being co-hosted by ThinkAct Platform and Katie Buddy, one of the leading agri-tech platforms. We have a, with us today a very eminent panel for a discussion on this important topic. This discussion would be moderated by Dr. Navneet Sharma, Director General, CIRC, Cuts Institute for Regulation and Competition. Briefly about Dr. Sharma, he assists governments and corporates address policy and business issues relating to business responsibility, market structure, and business conduct through designing customized advisory and capacity enabling solutions. Prior to CIRC, Dr. Sharma held B.B. Padode, uh, Chair Professor in uh, Business Responsibility and the Responsibility of Registrar at Vijay Bhumi University. From 2009 to 2012, he steered CIRC as Director. In his professional career, he has taken up various leadership roles with the ISEA under the Ministry of Corporate Affairs, Government of India, and Economic Laws Practice, to name some. His key policy engagements include Planning, Planning Commission Working Group on Competition Policy, MCA's High Level Net, uh, Committee for Framing India's National Competition Policy, and MCA's High Level Committee for Reforming Business Environment in India. He has a PhD in International Trade Law and Economics and an MBA. At CIRC, he leads a team of specialist lawyers, regulatory economists, financial analysts, experts in AI and ML, and sector experts to deliver solutions to clients in the private sector and governments. With this, I would request Dr. Navneet to kindly take over. All yours, Dr. Navneet. Thank you, <clears throat> Abhijit. Uh, let me add to Abhijit's welcome. Uh, welcome to this session. We have uh, approximately 75 minutes at our disposal and four eminent uh, experts to speak about uh, an important topic of uh, adoption of agriculture technology or ag tech. I'm sure you have heard of several other acronyms like ad tech, ad tech, or ad tech, that is ed tech. And now today, here we are talking about ag tech, ag tech. When, when it comes to technology, uh, I'm sure uh, the, the experts on the panel, they will explain to you and uh, I'm also mindful of the fact that amongst the audience, we have uh, very wise, very practical and very leading individuals of the sector. So therefore, I'm acutely alive that uh, when we are raising right kind of questions and, and providing right kind of answers, we will be accommodating good number of uh, questions from the audience as well. So before I invite, uh, before I set the context and invite today's speakers, I particularly want to mention this to our audience that uh, please, please feel free to uh, you know pose your questions in the chat box, uh, and and we will take those up uh, adequately at suitable occasion. In today's uh, discussion, we will try to narrow down exactly what which part of agriculture technology, what, which part of ag tech we are focusing today. And then what we will also systematically deep dive into the challenges which present themselves in terms of adoption of the technology by a variety of stakeholders, particularly farmers. And then we will look at some of the successful examples and perhaps not so successful examples with a singular vision, with a singular focus to understand why certain technologies receive good reception, good adoption, and vis-a-vis -vis not so good adoption. That is going to be our sole focus. 
And then we will, of course, in the meantime, also look at some of the ways in which EdTech permeation or adoption can be enhanced. This is the overall uh, framework in which we will be spending our next 75 minutes. To repeat one more time, feel free to post your questions. But uh, let at this juncture, uh, let me invite uh, some preliminary remarks from uh, the panel to set the context uh, in terms of where are we? Because overall, if you look at the macroeconomic context, agriculture and technology have a massive potential, massive unmet potential. I mean, Prime Minister has been saying about doubling the farmer income. A uh, number of India, Indian economy sectors have witnessed transformation because of technology. There are There is UPI, there is Aadhaar, there is Jandhan, and there is a number of examples where uh, either standalone tax solutions or digital public infrastructure has done massive, tra massive transformation. Agriculture is yet to witness that kind of uh, transformation. There have been some instances like ENA, some progress has been made, but I think that's largely government driven, but there's a lot of startup action happening in ag tech sector. Let's, let's first understand uh, what are we up to and what are we going to focus in today uh, uh, in, in, in today's webinar, uh, can I can I request uh, Pankaj Shukla you to begin and set the context? What are we looking at? Uh, what what are the issues you have on, on your head, on your mind? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Dr. Navneet, and uh, again I welcome all the audience in the uh, panelists. Please say, I think uh, if you see UPA and all those things, and uh, I think somewhere I'm just going through. Uh, the penetration of aptech in agriculture sector is i think approx one or two percent not more than that the like, universe is very vast and still uh, what we can say aptech as such in agriculture sector in india it's in a very nascent stage because there are multiple uh, ways i i think it can be impacted and it's basically uh, is the uh, demand of the uh, by the increasing population limited land holdings we have to increase the productivity and all and we can't increase the land increases and also somehow we need these technologies, how we can increase the production, how we can reduce the losses, how we can empower farmers with better technologies, be it through AI, IoT and other things. So definitely it is a need of the hour, but uh, penetration is not even one or two percent. So what is the real challenge? Because of late, I think for the last four or five years, Lot many companies they have came, they tried, uh, some have succeeded, some have failed. So, we need to see uh, how we need to address these challenges because India, as such, if you say it's like it's not, it's not a country, India, I take as a continent, it's like uh, what you can do in other small countries or in a very advanced country, the same thing can't be replicated in India. Uh, we need to see whether the solutions which has worked in the North America or in the European countries, whether these solutions addresses the problem of Indian farmers because it is, if you see India, it's basically small holders, 86% of the farming land is with them, 50% of the total acreages is with them. Now, whether the technologies which addresses a uh, solution for a, a farmer in uh, Northern America, which is having a farmer in some hundred or uh, thousands of acreages, whether that uh, problem can be taken or that same solution can be taken uh, in India, uh, where I think the land size is in acres, one or two acres, uh, but somehow we need to get it, how customized we can make the solution so that it is accessible, it is affordable, and it addresses the problem of the small holder farmers. I think this is basically is the need of the world. Right. <clears throat> so I think, uh, thank you very much for flagging uh, peculiarities of Indian agriculture, small land holding, uh, climatic diversity, and of course, uh, a different kind of cropping patterns across the board. Those are some of the peculiarities which also present themselves as challenges to egg tech entrepreneurs. Mr. Gotham, what has been your experience? Where, where have you seen some success or uh, lack of it? Uh, can you please uh, help us understand where are we in terms of navigating this sector? Hello. Yes, Mr. Gautam. This this was a question. Yes, yes please go okay. ahead. So 
actually we are uh, we are in india mainly dealing with the uh, small holder farmers so there are three four sectors which is uh, mainly one is the farm tech you can say in ag tech the farm tech so that is mainly uh, being adopted by the farmers so that is the different thing and uh, next is the market linkages market linkages is the most important for the farmers and the enam and other uh, apps are doing the good things with the farmers for the with their with their different services uh, quality checking quality uh, assessment then logistic then warehousing so different types are there so they are taking into that section so one section is the another section is the advisory so i'm talking about the digital uh, di digital phase of the uh, act tech <clears throat> which is mostly uh, uh, mobile mo mobile driven or uh, mostly mobile driven because that is the common uh, common instrument uh, among the farmers so most of the farmers have the access to it uh, so so i am talking about the mainly for the farm tech for the this uh, market linkages the advisory and this automation with the uh, with the sensor so these all technologies is being taken care for yes e commerce is also uh, in this farming space e commerce is also taking shape and uh, some of the uh, people are there uh, some of the companies are there who are doing this services so we are lead to uh, we are going to cover all these technology space which is among, which is running among the farmers so that's the way all right so that's a good 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 point to begin with that you know wherever uh, mobile can uh, you know um, address the information asymmetries and wherever sensors can do some magic to really uh, create a solution to any agriculture problems faced by either farmers or any other stakeholder. So these are the two important uh, pieces of solution uh, which you mentioned. Point taken, Mr. Gautam. Vivek, you have been on the ground for far too long from extreme north to now uh, the western part of the country. You have traveled far and wide. Uh, give us a sense of uh, this space, what's happening, what's working, what's not working. Unmute yourself, please. Uh, thank you, Dr. Namni. Actually, just in the continuation with like uh, both of my speakers, what they've said, the context, I would say like when tech uh, really, digital digital revolution is happening in India and all, all sectors, agriculture is also seeing uh, a vast change from like what has been the conventional methods, how things were promoted, and I think this is a very apt time. You know, the even the ecosystem or the, the support system is really developing and it's growing at a at a phase. Like you, you you can imagine like India already like with 2,800 crores of app it accounts for 5% of the total app downloads in the world. We have 76 million like uh, active internet users. And the important interesting thing is this 53% of them like are growing in the rural sector. That's something which is very encouraging, like what we you can say. And when it comes to attack uh, adoption, I think there are three eyes, basic eyes, which, which we uh, all roam around. One is innovation, investment, and infrastructure. So investment and infrastructure, they have slowly and gradually joined hands and they're growing at their own sweet pace. It's just the fire in the innovation sector, like innovation is something which requires a very localized or very customized to India, customized to area kind of a solutions, which, which should really give some tangible benefits to the farmers. I think that is something which a uh, lot of, uh, I think 2000 plus attack companies are trying to address. But yes, the pain point still remains what Pankaj really mentioned. Penetration is just one to two percent. Like, So we will try to figure out in next, like uh, whatever time we have in hand, uh, what can be done? What is something which we have as a suggestion? Over to you, Dr. All right, uh, that's that's a good comprehensive uh, context. Thank you, three of you, and those of you who I can see the list of attendings attendees being still. I can see new people joining in. Welcome everyone, one one more time. 
Uh, whatever observations, questions, suggestions you have, please do type in. And if you have a particular question to a particular panelist, do mention that. We will be very happy to take your uh, pointers on board. Uh, having said this context uh, of where are we in terms of this ag tech sector, um, Ankit Shukla, you uh, you have a good two over two decades of experience, right? You have worked with uh, farmers and agri input operations, you know, uh, including at Syngenta Foundation. Uh, Give us uh, now. Let us let us scratch the surface of this ag tech whole phenomena of ag tech. Give us from your vast experience, uh, prior and in your current position of as as chief operating officer of the Agri Entrepreneur Growth Foundation. Give us uh, a good example so that we can really figure out some contours of ag tech, and we can take one more step ahead to appreciate how does it work? How does it enable a farmer? How does it really deliver the magic it promises? Yeah, Dr. Nandi, thanks. Uh, thanks again for giving the opportunity. I think uh, uh, with the experience, I think like with Syngenta Foundation or Agri Entrepreneur Growth Foundation, we are connected to about 1.5 million farmers. And uh, these are basically, we can say about all 100% are smallholder farmers, small in the marginal farmers. And even we tried in our space how basically we can bring in this agri IoT or this app tech, how we can help this EG companies, app tech companies, like because because we act as a base as a platform for them because whatever the technologies they are bringing, we just give them a base, uh, try those technologies with our customer base, understand the pain points, challenges, or whatever the technologies that you are coming in, uh, try it, understand it. So what I can say, it's like a, uh, it's a big story. I think in few of the cases, it's like a success, uh, but it comes with a challenge. And in few cases, uh, like I said, it, uh, uh, most of the things which, is, which are coming, it's basically not suited for the smallholder farmers. Like I'll give you a simple example. I'll not name any of the tech company, whether it's a success or a failure. Uh, but like one of the company, it came and it's basically on that uh, remote sensing and all how through uh, uh, remote sensing and all and in the satellite based advisory and all they have uh, we have taken the trial in nasek so ultimately at the initial phases it was good and ultimate uh, total image how they will uh, predict the diseases based on the moisture and the uh, weather predictions and all whether the late break will come or on some other disease or test will come and you say, I think uh, ultimately the results that we got were not very encouraging because it's being a satellite based, uh, the unit size what they have considered, uh, we are not very sure on that. So we are not very happy or uh, the results were not that encouraging. But on a similar line, in a similar topography in the geography, we tried with another app tech which is working in a similar space, but uh, their technology is quite different. I think uh, they what they used is they uh, put in the weather uh, sensors, uh, IOTs they have used and uh, they are to an extent uh, they are good. I think uh, whatever the, they have predicted uh, it, uh, about 80-90% the predictions were correct. But it comes with a challenge the kind of costing uh, that this particular tech is giving is not very affordable uh, with the small builder farmers. Uh, another thing is with this technologies I think in all the land parcels you have to put in that piece and whether in the weather base, it's like a satellite imaginary, nothing is required, the cost is less, but accuracy is not there. It's affordable, it's accessible, but it's not addressing the solutions. And the technologies which is addressing the uh, uh, solutions uh, or the pain points, basically it's not affordable. So I think in both the front, it's a challenge. So I think if we can get a mix of that, uh, where a technology is like it is affordable, it is easily accessible, and their prediction is up to the mark. Then I can say it can uh, uh, make inroads in the uh, uh, with the small and the marginal farmers. That is one piece. Another piece we tried with uh, uh, input supplies and all. I think there are many companies like Dr. Gautam has said. Like if you see Indian spaces, Indian spaces, I think major of the ad tech companies they are either in the input or the output side. Whereas if you see the European countries and other advanced countries like China and all, there I think most of the app tech companies, they are into the advisory prop management and all. 
because there i think this agri input uh, and agri output i think channel is more or less streamlined so they are basically into that uh, the, the, the kind of land holdings they are having so there also we face the challenges i think in indian agriculture if you see everything is i think most of the area is rain fed the farmer will not wait for you if you say that product is available but i give you after four days they will not wait for it and then again uh, like vivek has said i think even though the internet has reached vivek but i think uh, i can share example nasik it's very easy if you go to putti in jharkhand you face the challenges so if the solution box in one area it will not work in another area so it's like we need a mix and a third point that i want to end with is uh, like uh, we are not having a complete full stack platform or a company which is providing a complete full stack like what all the companies they are working in silos they are having the different solution one company is giving a solution on input supplies they are good in that but they are not giving farm advisories and the solution in that there is another company which is good in a supply chain like enam and all the other government platform but that is only working on output piece of the things there is no input there is no advisory nothing on that so i think if Uh, and it's very tough uh, to a farmer if you say in your mobile you have, have five different application and with one application you do input another application you do output and the third application you they do crop advisory and another thing so it's very challenging for them because we have to understand the with the kind of level of knowledge and all those things that they are having so these are the challenges this uh, there are successes there are failures we need to see a mix how all we can come up with a solution which can address the problems i can share one more thing like we are working with many israeli startups as well so their technologies is very good then again uh, the challenge is affordability right so uh, i i see you you have made some extremely important points that number one is the comprehensiveness of any particular app and and that problem is compounded by the fact that there is no interoperability or interconnection between different apps that they could complement each other somebody providing information somebody providing other assistance on the input side and a third party providing assistance on the output side they are not all integrated so therefore number one is basic the app design fragmentation itself is a challenge hmm. right so that's an important point and third the third point you mentioned is that all of this the way upi is based on a common infrastructure set up by npci exactly in the similar fashion there is no common stack which supports all these apps so therefore uh, you become a, in a manner uh, contained in that particular app there is uh, uh, i mean when you want to exit perhaps your exit is not uh, you don't exit with all your data and therefore when you start with a new app you start your life cycle afresh so those are some of the important points thank you very much for uh, making those very important points and i think some of those are very systemic which need to be addressed by at the government level and some of those design problems can be addressed by uh, the the app creators the entrepreneurs so i think that's a very important point dr gautam if i can come to you and uh request you to bring some uh solutions which you have found working and uh, if you like even those you are welcome to bring those solutions which you found not working or not optimally working uh give us a sense of uh how agtech is working or not working dr gautam unmute yourself please thank you again uh, uh apps are working and not working that's a challenge mainly uh, many the things uh, the e-commerce apps which is uh, serving to the uh, serving um, among the farmers that's a uh, different e-commerce apps are there they are providing the they have made a touch point with the farmers so touch making touch point with the farmers whether it is a market linkage or whether it is a e-commerce or a grain port or advisory it is very important that is going to be the uh, key key thing for the success of any any kind of agtech in among the farmers because farmers needs an intervention face to face interaction if you want to educate them advise them train them anything 
through the mobile or through the uh, through the different uh, other digitally segment it is not going to it is not going to more effective so most of the uh, some of the companies not most of the but some of them they have touched that uh, they have made it touch point among the farming community at the root level but there is again one challenge they, they have created a touch point like the uh, the for the success making a success of the act the touch point they have made the common people like they have made the dispute as a touch point local retailer as a touch point local person as a touch point but there is one more uh, one more critical thing we are making the people as a touch point who are already engaged in different kind of business so the primary uh, primary objective and mindset of that touch point is to do their own business whether is suppose you have taken a retailer there as a touch point for providing agri inputs or taking things so that is the different uh, mindset he is mo mostly interested to do the agri input business instead of uh, getting the, your app to be uh, to be downloaded with the farmers or to educate the farmer to download the the app and train them for the different if you have put up a person also there so most of the time people are uh, these uh, app companies or you can say ag tech companies they have taken the people on the part time basis so that is not there is some so somehow some is uh, working differences there one is a full time one is a part time so he is engaged somewhere else also like retailers his main objective is to sell their product so these are the main things uh, touch point is highly important and Main, main other things are there the adaptability is the main concern uh, in the tech sector so not not about the india but if you take the asian <clears throat> asian figures which uh, reported somewhere that is 4% adaptability is going to be there into the next two years next two years it is going to be 4 4% adaptability that is reported by some uh, some agencies in asia not in india particularly and that has also fragmented into the two three parts like uh, main adoption is going to be there with the farm mechan farm mechanization and uh, other uh, rest, rest is going to be the remote sensing some sensors and things are and advisory is also going to be uh, on the lower scale because number of people are engaged in the farm advisory agriculture department is there in farm advisory agriculture universities is there in farm advisory kshi vigyan kend in farm advisory because and beyond all these things every person retailer is also <clears throat> working as advisor to the farmers if you have advised something uh, something to the farmers once he goes to the touch point like retailer he brain was everything whatever he learned from your app or advisory it is gone, gone gone to the wind so whatever he educates him he follows that only so this kind of touch, uh, these kind of challenges are there in the market to for the better adoption of the uh, ag tech uh, in this scenario amidst uh, this advisory overload as you say that a farmer is getting advisory from eight different sources clearly it's a case of overload at let yes. this picture, dr gautam let me bring take up a question from mr shashwat azarika and pose this to you how far it is achievable in rural areas of states like assam where most of the farmers have uh, don't have a smartphone you you are saying uh, information overload but mr azarika is saying that there is a, a very fundamental access issue Uh, people don't have a smartphone uh, can you reflect from your experience how lack of a smartphone uh, you know directly impedes the adoption of ag tech have a quick reflection on that yes adoption uh, with the uh, smartphone is going to be better but in the remote areas like northeast uh, regions uh, people have the uh, but uh, uh, what uh, what i have Uh, with my spend 35% access is there in the northeast for the smartphones only 35% so only those people can because the holdings of the farmers is quite lower even you cannot imagine we are talking about the small holders farmers 
but we are talking even, even small holder as per government norms. If you have the two less than two hectare of land, you are the small holder farmer. But it works with the mainly in, in northern region. But if you take to the hilly region or a northeast area, if you talk about the small holders, means I cannot say much more than uh, even less than uh, 0.3 acres lands are even less than that also. So in that case, uh, yes, penetration is going to be low in those areas with the smart uh, is smart works. Thank you. <coughs> and at this juncture, let me bring in Vivek. And Vivek, uh, you have seen uh, many things in Rajasthan, Haryana, Punjab, UP, MP, Maharashtra, Gujarat. Uh, good, good coverage of what uh, you have seen across the soil types, across the crop cropping patterns, across the farming communities. Give us some distilled sense. What have you seen working and why is it working? Actually, I, uh, I'll just, just uh, start on the other way around. So uh, what like, uh, like ag tech is, 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 a, is a buzzword, buzzword for last a decade now. And now I, there are 2,300 plus ag tech companies active in India. The, the basic question to all companies, all on, we, we are on the company side, just the question we really need to ask ourselves is what pain point we are addressing and what value each of us is trying to deliver. Is that a value we have really decided that like, okay, this is something which is important for the farmer or have we done some, some kind of a uh, ground truthing? What is the pain point and what is the requirement of the farmer? You know, as you say, uh, apps who, who have been successful or in, in a different segments or a UPI and all, they all are delivering value and they're solving a problem. They are solving a problem in a, in a, in a, in a way that is, that is uh, relevant for the masses. So as, as if we can decide, if we can really see this is something which is a pain point of the farmers. And if you can give them a value delivery in both in intangible and a tangible forms, that is something which you need to communicate like you know the, right now the awareness and awareness and, and and the efforts which has gone in so so i'll i'll say like uh, all of us are really in, uh, interested in developing something and i think the promotion ground is still something which we need to decide how we do how we want to promote it like as pankaj told they have a foot on the ground 1.5 million farmers they've been testing the act act so these, these are a kind of organizations which can give you a validation. So before you come in, you really need to have a clear cut thing in the mind, like what, what area you are, what pain point you are addressing and what is the value you are delivering. Rather than having first having an app, uh, doing some, some kind of a regional thing, going on a, on a, a valuation game, getting money and then deciding now what to do with now. Now I should go into which segment. So it has to be other way around. So the tech, like, you know, like Western countries, still the data modeling, and we are at a very primary stage of data modeling when it comes to ACTA. It will evolve, it will develop, it will be localized kind of a, a data model, like modeling, which will happen because that will, once that has been grounded, I think that will, that will create a revolution because then you can be very sure that, okay, this is something which, which will ensure this uh, this value delivery. So right now it's it's a st still a struggle or a kind of a, 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 a exploratory phase when in most of it like most of the companies are in. So so uh, I think like we need to really uh, uh, think on it. Like if you go to any part of the country, there is a different set of requirement. There is a like you go go up north. There is, a, there is a different set of kind of a market linkages, which is there. There is a government support. Everything is there. You go to Northeast or you go to Western, Western part of it. There is a different set of a market, which, which, uh, which farmer has to really go and uh, face. So, so it cannot be a homogeneous solution since like, as Pankaj said, it's, it's not a country. It's like a, almost a continent. There has to be a suitability to each region, each part. When you're saying that we need a platform, I think government is also putting up a lot of effort in bringing that agri stack in place. Like, 
we are like uh, they they are really coming up they want to really digitalize they have launched it in 12 states and and there will be a private and government partnership that that can really bring in the awareness to the level that should really fetch some considerable results when it comes to act up act tech adoption like right <clears throat> and i can see some observations uh, Prakash Mali, I, I, I respect what you're saying that can we consider GIS as decision support tool? Definitely, yes. I think uh, this is already being actively used. Thank you very much. Vijay Dole, what you're saying that uh, is it full, full stack in agree in a difficult task? Definitely, yes, it is difficult. But as Vivek just now said that government is trying and they are building up different pieces and uh, <clears throat> should it really be tried an important question, yes, uh, Vijay Dole, your, you have a valid question that we should be trying it, definitely yes. But, uh, and then Sayed has a, a very important point, uh, what three of you just now said that EdTech companies must work on uh, to, to serve the needs of Indian farmers, that is reducing input cost, uh, reducing wastage, and number three, advisory on demand, and cropping pattern, and number four, reduction of chemicals and water. Part of point one, Agritech uh, Ag -tech must address uh, rural employment. These are uh, some of the observations uh, here in the chat box. Uh, can three of you, I'll go one by one. Let me first go to Dr. Gautam. Can you give me an example where either some, one or many of these objectives have been achieved by an Ag Tech solution? Uh, you know, on the on the price on the cost burden rationalization or efficiency cropping efficiency. Uh, any any good example, Dr. Gautam? Jesse, uh, this whole agri value chain is quite fragmented. Different expertise required for at the different stage. So it is because of its fragmentation, and uh, I don't think uh, any. Uh, consolidated uh, AgTech uh, is there uh, to serving the farmers from from the sowing to the up to the crop production, covering the different yes different players are giving different uh, so I don't think there is a one who can provide all the details. Yes, they are trying. They are there are some apps who are covering from sowing to up to the uh, uh, better crop production. Only four or five touching points they are taking up, but not uh, not the everyone. Yes, I cannot uh, name the uh, apps, but there are some apps which are delivering from so soil testing to the good uh, soil health to uh, to the sowing time, weather forecast and uh, uh, soil moisture monitoring. So they are taking up, there are some, but not all, but some, only some. Dr. Kauza, my question is how accurate are the results of these apps? Are they reliable? Is farmer benefiting for, from those results? Is, is a very question uh, which will either make or break trust. So can you give, give us some insight on that? Trust, trust is uh, quite being influenced by many people surrounded, so farmers surrounded by many people. So sometimes trust is also being uh, influenced by the many people. Suppose I have some something in my hand and uh, so people are guiding, oh, this is not a good thing. It may do, suppose you take the example of mobile, it's, it's a good for us, it's a bad for us. So it depends on the, how we use the information provided by the mobile. Yes, but uh, there are something which cannot be because consistency in the information provided by the app is missing. Somewhere is missing because of many reasons like uh, internet connectivity, instrument, uh, instrument, IoT and other services. So many things are satellite information, some cloud, uh, uh, cloud intervention. So things are missing. So I cannot say that everyone is perfect and farmer should trust it blindly or with the time they should go and trust it. So many things are there. So I cannot say anyone to okay, this is the right one and this is the not right one. All right. Let me pose this question. Let me reword and pose this question to Pankaj Shukla in, in a different context. 
Uh, we have seen in our country that agriculture, uh, either uh, you know, ag agriculture research, agriculture education, and agriculture extension. Agriculture is one of the few areas where we have elaborate infrastructure set up by ICAR, by state governments, by state universities, and so on and so forth. There is a vast network of KVKs. Amidst such vast infrastructure, what are the specific pain points or failure points which the ag tech companies are really serving? Because there must be something lacking in this massive infrastructure, isn't it? That's where the ag tech opportunity lies. Yeah, definitely, Dr. Navneet. I think a uh, question well taken. If you see, I think uh, it's like with the uh, KVKs, with the ICRs, with the agriculture universities, uh, a lot of uh, agriculture department extension services, and there is a very uh, big force of agri input companies There is also there in the crowd. And uh, somehow I think why these companies they are focusing on that because with the kind of the or the desired results which is expected out of this large uh, research that has been done with a lot of uh, expenses that the government and the other infrastructure they are making. But ultimately the kind of results that we should get, we are not getting. That is the reason why I think why the app tech are coming because there is they see a gap. If it's addressed through the KVK system or the agriculture universities and all those things, this app tech will not come into the picture because they see a vacuum there or a space there where they can operate because there is a requirement, there are the technologies available, but it's not going to the farmers. Like what uh, Gautam Sabha said, I accept. I think there are app tech companies now they are coming, which they call them as a full stack. Uh, but that is in a very nascent stage. What they, can, they will supply the inputs, they will supply the advisories, they will procure the outputs, and even they facilitate giving the credits. So even they are addressing all the fields, there are few app tech uh, which have started doing that, but with the kind of the results which are required, the results are not there. And even in the chat, I can see one or two questions uh, 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 like UPI. UPI is a simple example you have given, but uh, with the uh, complexity of the Indian agriculture and the topic that we are discussing, what I see UPI is very simple thing. Suppose if I have to give Vivek 50 rupees, I'll just UPI to 50 rupees to Vivek with any of the platform and the story ends there. But if you see the agriculture and using the app tech in that, and I take a simple example of uh, farm produce or the procurement or the output marketing, there are multiple phases and UPI is a part of that. I think once when, when there is a production, then I someone will put, okay, I, this is the production I have or the buyer will say, this is the demand I have. Then both buyer and the seller, they will do the negotiation. Okay, this is my price, whether it's available or whether you can give on that price or not. When the price is fixed, then logistic is a big, very big challenge in Indian context. Okay, whether who will bear the logistics, then there is quality, there is grading, then there is transportation, then the material reaches there, then again the question will ask, okay, you have said you will send this kind of or this grade of material, ultimately I have received this grade of uh, material, again the conflict with them, and when everything is done, then UPI comes into the picture where the money is transferred. So what I say in this agri tech or app tech, it's a very big story. There are multiple phases, input, output, advisory. If you say output, in output also there are multiple phases. And I think rightly touched upon by Gautam Sahib, I think if you see Indian farmer, na, still uh, they are of the mindset, they rely more on the face-to-face -face interaction and all those things rather than uh, depending on the mobile, he has not seen a person and just based on the few of the messages that they have or the chats they have done on the WhatsApp or the platform, they will send the material with the hope that they will get the money. So that is a trust issue because still they need a touch point. A person should come, see, see they can even interact with them and all those things. So again, I'll come to the same point. It's like, like it's the universe is very vast. Full stack is possible. and uh, But it will take some time. And uh, I'll take one point of view. I think uh, the people should not come with their point of view of what they should do. They will first see what is basically the demand or the pain points at the ground and how through their app tech they can address those pain points. Because it's very tough to uh, put in your thing, but if you come with a solution for a problem, then the adoption is very easy and the people will take that. Right. So that's where <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to deliver some value to our audience who are already in quite a big number. Uh, I can see the numbers swelling further. 
so let's, uh, I, I mean, I, I, I take all your points that it's a diverse field, problems are very diverse. So therefore, uh, developing a common stack is, is a massively challenging thing. I also see what you're saying that uh, uh, Indian farmers, naturally, that, that's our cultural heritage that we, we uh, seeing is believing and, and tag tag or an app is somewhat uh, abstract phenomena. And given that uh, number of uh, fraud, uh, frauds are also reported every now and then. So a vulnerable farmer is likely to feel slightly hesitant point taken. But don't you think that, and we have a number of examples to demonstrate this. Vivek, we have seen a number of examples where uh, new things have come up and people have adopted because they started receiving the benefits. I mean, initially, I'm sure when we were all counting notes, uh, checks were looked at with some amount of hesitation. Subsequently, subsequently, online transactions came, even those were looked at with some amount of hesitation, and then came UPI. We have seen how money has passed, lost its relevance, and people have adopted across the board, across the country. I mean, if we apply this analogy in ag tech sector, how do you see this evolving where, because people are getting some concrete monetary benefits, I mean, amidst, uh, I, would, I would put it this way, Vivek, that amidst this overload, overload of information, which I can see uh, um, uh, one more question from Mr. Shadab Ahmed, that there is uh, an, an extra exposure to you know, additional, but if, if there is one sage voice which can give me, which can calm my anxieties, which can give me useful information, useful advisory, which can get me the exact solution to, I, to, to what I'm looking forward to. Will I not be uh, looking at this with some amount of trust and therefore greater adoption? You know? Therefore, my question to you is that, uh, how do we find some trust and success in this sector? I mean, the challenges are very well noted now. But how do we start seeing the sunlight? Sure, sure. I would, I would uh, really, uh, you know, uh, one one thing I just like in between when, when the discussion was going on, uh, like there is an information overload. What this attack is doing, apart from whatever information sources are there, is something which is very, very, a uh, very valid question. So I would rather say like we are, we have to move towards the precision agriculture with all these AI, ML, IoT and everything, you know, there can be like, you cannot address that this much of a mass of farmers, what we have in India. EdTech will, I think going forward will really be giving a precision agriculture advisories, precision agriculture guidance to the farmer based on his very farm specific kind of a, uh well, actionables like so this is something which is which is which will put it apart as a as a, as a separate thing a source of information then all other sources of information because that will be again like i was talking about the data modeling uh, like so uh, when we when we are saying that now we have availability of the gis uh, as uh, prakash in the chat box really suggested we have our different sensors. We have different different technologies, which is which is at our disposal. So, so the difference what what really needs to be created, apart from the infrastructure, what has worked from the government, from the institutions, from the IRIs, KVKs, and all, is the difference is that was more on a regional, good package of practices, good agriculture practices like the same kind of a recommendation to a group of farmers to a particular region and all now we are moving towards the precision agriculture you know that's where the technology will play the role and that is where really the focus should be but who will who will really uh, demonstrate that or who will really make that thing deliver on the ground as well as perceived by those people who are getting it like so that's a question like so so whatever, whatever that that converts into monetary benefit, 
being a human being that is something which clicks the fastest you know i can go on and have a presentation saying that i have impacted this much of farmer i have given this much of advisory i have done this thing but is that is that something that has resulted into some extra money in the pocket of the farmer if that so go pick up a loudspeaker and tell everybody give the social proofing so the approach should be really rather than expanding fast i think the technology technology companies should really go in whatever regions whatever uh, their their uh, uh, kind of a strength areas are go work with the farmers do the below, below the line activities you know in india from the from like i, I am a strong believer and i know uh, now it's been talked about everywhere a combination of physical and digital that is like digital what what uh, world is emerging has to be the starting point like you know that it because the trust factor you you know, you know the farmers age old practice where somebody is coming in telling them what to do this will this will really be the something which is very important that you should have you should have the last mile delivery partner or somebody whom whom uh, the farmer can go and ask for so that that physical is something which is which is a starting point as like you said the transformation from check to uh, to uh, like internet banking to upis or that will happen only when the farmer start trusting it you know for a year or two he might say okay the whatever like i have somebody to access and then slowly and gradually the comfort will come in the digital when he is getting the delivery even without going for the contact of the physical person the transformation will i what i foresee is is something which will come and nobody can uh, like stand alone nobody can really really crack it that's i'm very sure so there has to be some ground partners a uh, very authentic ground partners having clear kind of a footing on the ground clear objectives digital uh, kind of a partnerships and they if they deliver value and 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 i think that can be a starting point and that has to be the starting point if we really want to get a deep penetration inside like my question to three of you is, is that if uh, if data can do the magic in in terms of successful dating apps or even astrology apps right i'm giving you two extremely different examples and and then then it comes to human health sector where uh because the because an app has got a has cultivated vast data on retina and therefore once you present a retina scan the app can predict these are the possible challenges with this person right similarly uh i mean i i'm i'm trying to figure out why ag tech sector ag tech companies cannot deliver that magic i mean and once you create once you give me that if you give me a scan of a brinjal i can tell you this is the particular pest which is really troubling uh, or or reducing the happiness of the farmer similarly on cotton similarly on fruit similarly on vegetables i mean is, are, is there that kind of magic happening dr gautam uh which we can see and uh that's where i would like to bring you uh, and understand dr gautam that how we can make this whole process far more sharpened and useful to the farmers and in this process ag tech companies can also make good money but give me the sweet spot where does it lie going forward dr gautam thank you <clears throat> there are three pain points in the whole agri uh, value chain the one is the and farmers can be the most happier with the higher income so higher income is dependent uh, depend on the market prices market prices are the quite fluctuating time to time this year may be good this and again next year may be low potato tomato onion these are either of any product is being uh, uh, reaching at a very high levels and on another part of the country in a particular year some where this is being thrown on the road side so this kind of uh, uh, unpredictable unpredictable market behavior and price behavior is there so that is one point second point is that 
weather is now it is not going to be predictable so the but the agricultural practices are fitted into the particular time frame that's a three months or four months crop at this stage this uh, every crop required different temperature different uh, weather behavior at a different stage for to perform the uh, best uh, output but the weather is not supporting to that cs apps are there they are sister actics are there they are informing there it is going to rain temperatures is going to high the cloudy the weather but crop requirement yes i am informing to the uh, community and to the farmer that it is going to be there and uh, weather condition but crop requirement is fixed they require this much of temperature at this stage so that is also a very big challenge to the farmers yes they are getting the uh, weather advisory and uh, basic one is the soil soil health is deteriorating day by day in india and that is the going to be the main concern with the farmers even the same kind of advisory cannot we uh, suppose we are two farmers myself and someone vivek swami is there two farmers having land beside each other but we cannot follow the same recommendation from the weather uh, from the advisory of any kind of people whether it is a uh, whether it is from kvk by government by any act app or by retailers because soil condition is going to be different both of us we are applying different things so these are the three main challenges and if we are addressing these three challenges that is one thing we have to address the three challenges to the farmer and at, at different uh, different stages second thing implementation execution execution strategy is very much important working among the farmers because already it has been confirmed that mr pankaj sukla swami information overload is there in the market so farmer is going to sitting here in their radio information weather information krishi vigyan kendra agriculture university this variety that variety so he is Uh, overloaded with the information so strategy is going to be different for the implement implementation of the how to execute the app how to educate and train the train the farmer that is very important so these three things need to be covered if anyone is addressing a single issue at a time any act take app is going to address a single issue that is there is also a success rate is going to be high adoption is going to be high all right uh <laughs> in terms of now uh, since we are looking at the uh, brighter side the solution side the sunnier side uh pankaj shukla give us a sense of how we see uh the agtech companies really making a difference i mean at a national level in in punjab for example soil quality punjab and haryana soil quality is already a major challenge and likewise uh different parts of our country are having different problems right yeah and so there is a there is there are multiple challenges but multiple solutions as well how can these solutions really create uh, a, a nice little palette where uh, government policy farmers state everybody can see some sunnier side of these ag tech solutions yeah so dr raj what i will do i'll take your question i'll take the question that you have posted to uh, dr mr gautam and i'll mix both the question and give the answer i think there are technologies and the application which are available if you can pick, uh, click a picture of that leaf or you can if you can uh, click a picture of that fringer and uh, that that it will say okay this is the infestation and this is the chemical that you have to spray and there that story ends what i am telling and what i am insisting really it's not a full stack like uh, uh, earlier also i think vivek gautam sir has told he at the decision making lot of decision making happens over the counters so even if suppose an application is told me okay is there this is the particular disease or this is the particular stress which is infested your crop and this is the why chemical that you have to spray but ultimately then when this uh, uh, farmer will go to a retailer to buy that chemical then again the decision making uh, whatever the advisory advisory is given everything is gone if you say the current of, uh, level of uh, information or uh, the uh, record of the track that farmer will keep it's very tough i think they will say ki mere ko wo wala bottle de do neela rang ka tha lal rang ka tha they can just remember the pictures they don't remember the names if they go with you will be why chemicals you never know whether that retailer is giving him the why chemical or the z chemical 
If it is Y chemical, the result will get. If it's a Z chemical, then again the impression will go. Ultimately, what that aptek has suggested is not correct. So what my point is, if we can have a full stack, if I can say, okay, this is X is the problem, Y is the solution, and next day I'll deliver you that chemical in those steps, pray that you'll get the result. Then it will address the solution. But if I'll say and stop in between but just by recommending and not physically delivering the thing, then it's a challenge. Like another thing you said for Punjab and all, soil is deteriorated because heavy consumption, it is all, 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 also being blamed for the green revolution and all over uh, utilization of fertilizer, hybrid varieties and all those things. Now I think they are paying the prices even for this pollution, daily pollution and all those things. So there are also the, there are solutions which are there. But it's the basically we have to change the mindset of the farmers and we have to tell them, okay, you don't see uh, your short term goals, go for the long term goals. What you want to give to your future generation, it's not like what I'm doing, I'm going to end it. It's basically to your future generation, the bit in you have to pass it down. And that is a lot many companies, if you say they are not getting into why we are going for this flood irrigation and uh, traditional sowing. Uh, and like uh, Pusa Decomposer SK, other companies have come with other products. There are companies which are providing the TSR services and all how you can basically reduce the stubble burning and all those kind of things. So solutions are available. And with the challenges that we have with the Indian agriculture, it's a very vast, I think it's again, I'll say it's a continent, multiple people, multiple solutions. And if you want to address it, and if you want to reduce that curve, because if we'll go by the similar pace, it will take next 10 years to get a penetration of uh, 10 more percent, which is there of one or two percent as on date. If you want to steepen that graph and want penetration in next five years, then I think full stack is one of the solution. If the companies can come with a full stack with a single platform, if I can, all my problems are getting addressed, then it will give a confidence as well. Suppose. I have taken an input that input is performed very well. Then I even I prefer that particular app or I use for uh, selling my output as such. So full stack is a solution. Understand the pain points. Prepare those things which are affordable, accept, accessible, like Vivek has said, digital. It's like a physical base and the uh, internet. How we can mix it and can deliver the solutions. Right. So let's. Uh, come to, I mean, since you spent a good deal of time explaining the importance of full stack, uh, let me request Mr. Swami that, you know, uh, if you look at the existing work which has happened in development of India stack, so we have multiple layers already available. Let's say the individual identity layer is already ready. The Janadhan Aadhar infrastructure is already ready. The land record uh, structure, uh, I mean, digitization is to a great extent it is ready. Of course, there are more work needed. Now, I want to bring in a, another example of an unrelated sector, just to uh, pose this question to you, uh, Mr. Swami, that, you know, government is trying to create a tourism DPI. And you would agree that tourism is uh, almost as diverse or as complex as, as agriculture because tourism was also entire country, different locations, different carrying capacities, different climates, different seasons. And so it has good variations, but government has decided to set up a DPI, digital public infrastructure, wherein there will be a generic layer, there will be a sectoral layer, and there will be applications wherein the hotels and everybody else can plug in. So there is an architecture which is available. So when it comes to developing agri stack, uh, what are what are the possibilities here uh, that we can consider and uh, perhaps put it in a form of a note and send it to policymakers in Delhi? Uh, thank you, Dr. Navneet. And I think uh, I would I would uh, really say that uh, there is there's some effort which is going in from the government side. As you said, it's at a central government. Then there are certain sort of roles and responsibility on the regional regional level, and 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 they are also looking at the private sector. You know, each one of the apps like who who are who have done some wonders or which has got some acceptable uh, adaptability in the farmers. There is some kind of a skill set or something they have mastered on. Something they have mastered. 
So as Pankaj was telling an agri stack or a full stack, and I saw that the, is that possible or in the in the chat box. So that's very much possible. What I see going forward, I think there will be a lot of uh, categorization and lot of lot of consolidation that will ha happen in the in in this ag tech sector. Like there, are, like it's it's like everybody cannot be the master of everything. Like you can be a master of input, uh, you can be a master of output. But if you are you are bringing in all your skills on the same same platform, you're joining hands. That's where you can you're doing a justice. Like. I can develop a, a solution which I would say I, I I'm mastering this. I, I'm giving end to end solution, but I need to bring all those pieces together, which can really deliver something which is which is expected out of a full stack, and that's what government is trying to do in the making an agri stack. They are trying to digitalize every farmer's digital identity they wanted to create. And they, they, they are also asking uh, solutions to come and, and deliver it on the regional level and give their expertise in this line. So, so, so that is one, one thing which, which is undergoing a development. And I think, I think, uh, uh, and one more thing, uh, what, what I have seen uh, as per my experience, talking to the different like uh, stakeholders, uh, I, I would say the technology will become a bespoke. Like it will be, I think it will be very crop specific, region specific, problem specific thing. So it this is this is something which I foresee like that that's going to happen if we really want it to be real of, of our real use. Like another thing which 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 I that comes to my mind like where we all of us are struggling because you, looking at the geography of the country, if you if you say that I'm coming in and I'm I can really do wonders and can really change the conventional markets, conventional modes and all that, that is never going to happen. So the technology which should really be inclusive of what, what has been set up in the last seven decades, what is there as an ecosystem which exists on the ground, if there is, there is some kind of a joining hands with them, empowering them, enabling them to bring in efficiency, enabling them to reduce their overhead cost and ultimately making it possible that, that the cost to the farmer gets reduced is the fastest way is the fastest way what i see and and i would also say uh, uh, that there are a lot of corporates a lot of brands when you talk about multinational brands when you talk about the indian brands who have their foot on ground for last four decades five decades they already have their brand which is which is having a like a trust factor attached to that so there has to be some some leverage that can be really brought in from the existing players. You have to have all the the, the existing network not being left out. You have to have something which 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 is inclusive, and 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 uh, rest things will all in fall in place. Like fantastic. Two important points. That one is use the existing strength. That's that's a great point. I really like that because. That way you are leveraging the existing trust quotient, which exists already. Right. So that's that's really nice. And then also build on the government uh, different pieces. I mean, let me give you an analogy, Vivek, that you know, uh, developing a DPI is akin to growing your lawn, where you don't you don't grow a grow your lawn all all in one go. You you place small patches of grass. You water it, and then it becomes one green, one green patch. So that's the way. Uh, even a India India Agri Stack will be developed in in a few months or years time. But um, Dr. Gautam, uh, as CEO of Farmberry, you have massive experience, thirty five plus years of experience. Give us your sagely advice as to how what Vivek says be spoke. How I mean that is highly possible. That is the whole promise of ag tech. In in fact. What humans alone or what ordinary machines could not achieve, ag tech offers to achieve. Dr. Gotham, tell us uh, how uh, this solutioning, bespoke solutioning is going to take shape going forward, uh, your world. Yes, there is a lot of scope and there is uh, uh, for the ag tech segment. Uh, with a different adoption rate is going to be different with the different segments. 
like farm mechanization, if there are any uh, tech companies coming with the farm mechanization solutions, that is at, uh, adoption level is very high. So that is going to be there with, with the, uh, among the farmers. Second level, remote sensing is also going to be being adopted by the farmers. So I can say that it is going to be there with the farmers, with the, but some challenges are there which is going to be addressed by this. And the problem is that this agriculture is completely by the region, by the people, by the uh, climatic condition. We have 32 major climatic condition in India and the region is different, people are different, language are different. So we have to, I have find some actor app having 14 languages or 13 languages or coming with the different languages. So there is an option and some apps are coming with a voice note also. If you, uh, if you click something, they, they will answer in your language. So that is going to be a great solution for the farmers. Because if you expect the farmers that it is going, he, uh, he will type something, then he will learn something. There are a lot of physical challenges. Internet is there, uh, uh, light sensor is there, and the uh, instrument for different farmers having different instruments. So if something is coming, if something you are going to give them a voice, uh, voice conversation, uh, it is going to be great for the farmers because uh, it is already working. Farmers are used to it also. For the banking system, put one, press one for this and this, and press two for this information. Simply things move in that way. Instead of typing, yes, type your name, type your uh, location, this, push this button, or give this information. It will be so. Wise is going to play the major role uh, to make a success of the uh, different active app among the farming community. Great. Um, one is that you said, um, developing apps which are for low bandwidth. So even developing apps which can work even at two G speed is yes. one special point yes. to mention. Uh, and that's where. And the number two is the language, uh, which honestly, Doctor Gautam, I don't see as much of a challenge. The way Bhashini solution has been developed or is being developed. I don't see language uh, becoming any, any more a barrier because Bhashini will allow multiple Indian languages to be interoperable, both in terms of text conversion as well as the voice conversion. Bhashini is going to be a massive solution to kill the language related problems. Uh, uh, if I can come to you for your closing remarks, Pankaji, how do you see this whole bespoke movement happening and the massive personalization of either advisories or solutions happening because I personally see that's where the real magic will happen by ag tech companies. How do you see that happening? I think, Dabiji, think, that is the beauty of ag tech. I think ag tech, you can customize to a farmer level. I think it is very tough. I think if you, like Gautam Sob is telling and even Vivek was telling, that is the beauty with AppTag. I think you can even pinpoint to a single farmer, a small 0.5 acre of land and based on satellite imaginary and other, all the uh, basic the technologies, uh, the, uh, the past data and all those things with all those algorithms and arithmetics and all, even you can, a single farmer, you can give the advisory journal by taking this basic data. So I think that that is the beauty of that. And it's I think AppTag is only successful when it works in a bespoke model. If uh, on a very generalized mode, I think if they give the advisory, okay, your particular villages, this will happen, then I think the adoption will not be there. And as a closing remark, what I can say, it's I think it's the need of the hour. The only thing, how it is being faced, how it is being developed, uh, taking the audience or the customer into the mind. If we are considering that, uh, taking all those things into the picture, and then the curve that we are looking for, I, I, the, what I see the adoption of 10, 15 or 20 percent next five years, I don't want to see the adoption takes 10 years. By that time, a new technologies will come into, uh, you, you never know the robotics and all those things where will take us in next five or 10 years. Adoption will happen. We need only need to see how we can uh, basically facilitate or bring, come, come up with the solution so that it's basically the bindings is there from the farmers. 
adoption is uh, there and uh, they uh, see the value in that. I think somehow in some of the point, I think Vivek has mentioned a point, if I'm getting five rupees out of adopting something, if I'm getting a benefit of five rupees, then I will adopt that thing. If I am not getting that in the monetary terms, because if the farmers, if you are going with anything and you will tell it, you do this practice and you are getting the results after three years, five years, your soil will not deteriorate and all those things, they will, okay, they will, but that will be in the back of the mind. But upfront, if you can say, if you adopt these practices in the next cropping cycle, you'll get a benefit of 10% or 15%, then the adoption will be there. So I see there is a, a big opportunity and it has to come because without this, Technologies and app tech, it's very uh, tough to uh, basically feed the empty uh, uh, mouths and all those things. So we should work on that. Lovely. Uh, I come to you, Vivek, for your closing remarks. How do you see the promise or the potential of ag tech being unfolded next couple of years? I, I don't, I'm very optimistic because India is already steering, getting ready for 6G. So I don't see if we are going, if with 6G rollout, I don't see ag tech will take longer to get unfolded. Your closing yeah. remarks. Yeah. I would I would uh, also also uh, address to a very burning question. And I think we had that in the question answer. Who will pay for the ag tech? How this can be monetized? How, how who, who will be really be, what is a kind of an incentive for, for ag tech to invest in the technology and for all that stuff? You know, this is this is something which is very tricky. And with the Indian farmers, Indian conditions, even for any consumer, any customer base, the first thing what you need to really do is deliver them the value. If somebody is say, asking their case, if I, I just hope that farmer will be paying me even 100 rupee for, for my app, I think that's not going to happen. Like. So, so the future which is coming with the AI, ML, IoT, if there is a precision kind of advisory, there are a kind of a market linkages, which is the biggest pain point. Like I have grown something as per your advisory. I have grown quality. I have increased the production, but still I'm going and having the same kind of a market access. So, so linking that market linkages and uh, fetching him, really paying him back for all his good work, what he has done as per your advisory, if he gets the monetary benefits, you know, a year or two, like every every app, what has come, like whether it's a chat GPT or whatever we have seen that which came in and which made you addicted, which gave you delivered the value. Now, if they say that you have to pay for this, if I'm getting value, I'll pay. There are two things. Either I'm, I got addicted or I really felt that, okay, this is useful. So in the first step, if we are really thinking that who will pay for the act or who will, how the Remunerations will come for the companies. This is this is a, 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 a process we, we, which we all have to go through. We have to deliver first, then we can really access the uh, the the monet, We can reap the monetary benefits. That is something which 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 I I would say is my closing remarks. Thank you, and uh, I would only say that if uh, if so much of trading can be influenced by astrologers. I am pretty confident that ag tech can influence the agriculture decisions of this country. On that note, thank you very much to of you, uh, uh, Dr. Gotham, CEO of Farmberry, Mr. Pankaj Shukla, Chief Operating, of, Operating Officer of Agri Entrepreneur Group Foundation, uh, Vivek Swami, uh, Head of Sales, Kethi Wadi. Thank you very much for bringing loads of wisdom. I know it has been a very, it's a very unstructured topic. So therefore, having to structure, having to bring this in, these insights have been uh, a massive uh, contribution made by three of you. Uh, thank you very much for the, to, uh, to Kethi Buddy and AgTech for putting this together. And this has been a truly enjoyable and truly insightful conversation for me. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Thank you, thank Dr. You, it's a pleasure. Thank you, Dr. Sarma. 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 Thank you,